Hi, in this problem we're going to evaluate this definite integral using the limit process. We're going to do it the long way. So before we do it, let me just briefly recall the formulas that we're going to be using in order to do this problem. So recall that if you have the integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x, you can do the following. This is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the finite sum as i runs from 1 to n of f of, and I'll use c sub i, some books use x sub i, and then delta x. And for c sub i, we're going to choose these endpoints here, a plus i delta x, and there's different ways to do this, this is just one way. And then for delta x, we're just going to use b minus a over n. So this is the width of the subintervals. We're going to choose a partition such that each subinterval is of equal width. It's called a regular partition, just extra knowledge. Okay, so this is what we need to do. So we need to work our way uh, up to this, right? And then at the very end, we'll take the limit. So we just do it one step at a time. So I really think it helps to write down the formula every time you do one of these and just go really slow. So first let's identify a and b in this problem. So it looks like a is the bottom number. So a is one, success, right? So, and b is four. So we've got some progress done. <laughs> so, and now we can find out delta x because we can't really get c sub i until we get delta x, right? Because you see it appears here in the formula. So delta x is b minus a over n. So delta x is going to be four minus one over n. And you might say, what's n? It's just n. So it's 3 over n. So delta x is equal to 3 over n. And I'm going to put this in a box just because, you know, it just makes it easier to identify. Also, if you're taking a class, like if you're doing this for like school or something, um, you know, if you're taking a test or something, it just helps. Like you know, the person who's grading your work be like, oh yeah, they found delta x. You know, they, they know how to do that. <laughs> so, and then c sub i is a plus i delta x. So a is 1 plus i, and then delta x was 3 over n. And that looks really funny, so I'm just going to write it like this. c sub i is equal to 1 plus 3i over n. And just again, just to add some clarity, and to keep me from going way too fast, we have c sub i equals 1 plus 3i over n. Plus, if you go too fast, you make mistakes. All right, so now we need to figure out this piece up here. So we've got the delta x, that's good. We need f of c sub i. So this is our f of x, this whole thing here. Without the dx, obviously, just, just this function. So now we need to plug this into f of x, and this is where people sometimes mess up. So f of c sub i, now I'm not gonna put c sub i, I'm just gonna put one plus three i over n, because it's the same thing, right? So just like that. All right, this is f of c sub i right here. This is the c sub i. And then you just replace each copy of x with 1 plus 3i over n. So this is 1 plus 3i over n, and that's squared, plus, and then 2, and then it's 1 plus 3i over n, and then minus 5. And this is where rushing sometimes, like, it's really easy to mess up. I've messed up, and it's just, you know, easy mistakes, right? That's why it's good to have everything in boxes. All right, so to multiply this out, there is a formula. I'm going to use a different color here. If you have a plus b quantity squared, I think of a as the first and b as the second. So you square the first, and then you multiply the a and the b, and you double them, and you square the last. That's how I memorize the formula in my head. So this is or I just have it memorized too, like this, but it's a nice way to think about it when you're working it this way, because there's no A and B here, so you square the first one, plus you multiply these two, so one times three I over N, that's just three I over N, and then you double it, so times two will give you six I over N, and then you square the last one, so you have to square the three, so you get nine, you square the I, so you get I squared, 
you square the n so you get n squared. And I just had this thought, so I'll share it. It's not an imaginary unit, right? It's not going to be negative one, right? It's a variable. So I've seen people do that. It's, it happens. So plus two times one is two. And then two times this will be six i over n. And then we have the minus five here that's hanging out. Okay, so let's combine like terms. And just as a formality, I'm gonna put all of the terms of like highest degree first. So like the i squared terms first. So I'm gonna put that one first. So this would be n i squared, just to give myself some structure so it looks a little bit better for me. Six i over n plus six i over n is 12 i over n. And then we have a bunch of numbers we have to add. This is where it's really easy to mess up. So one plus two is three. Uh, three minus five is negative two. Well, I hope I did that right. That's like, <laughs> yeah, let's do it backwards. Negative five plus two is negative three plus one is negative two. Yep, that checks. So this, this is f of, I'm gonna put c sub i now just to really make the point. So this is f of c sub i right here. I'm gonna put it in a box as well, right? Because this is c sub i here. So now you see we have everything we need in these nice little boxes, right? We've got delta x, we've got c sub i, we've got f of c sub i. So now we can start filling it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this piece now. I'm gonna wait to the very end to write the limit. And the reason is, as I'm sure you know, once you write the limit sign, you have to keep writing that limit sign in every step until you actually take the limit. So let's go ahead and write out the formula. So we have the finite sum as i runs from one to, and it's really important to write it all out like this, I think it really helps, f of c sub i delta x. So this is equal to the finite sum. I might have to try to write a little smaller here. I don't know if that's possible though. So f of c sub i is this piece here. So basically we just replace it. So parentheses nine i squared over n squared plus 12 i over n 12i over n, and then minus two. And then we have delta x. Well, what's delta x? Ah, it's in a box, right? The beauty of boxes, now it's circled. It's in a circle box, <laughs> three over n. Okay, so this next step is a step where you can show a gazillion steps, but honestly, it's better to skip some steps here. It's easier, so watch this. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna switch colors here, I'll go back to yellow. And we're just gonna distribute. So we're gonna do this times this. And everything that doesn't have an i, we're gonna pull it out of the sum, okay? So three times nine is 27. I'm gonna write it over here. Okay, n times n squared is n cubed, right? Because the sum depends on i, it's the index of the summation. So anything else you can pull out. So this is the sum as i runs from one to n, and we're left with simply i squared, right? And that's on purpose. I wanted to have that there so we can use the formula for i squared, right? Because we have that formula and we can use it. So super, super useful. Again, three times nine is 27. Okay, so no worries there. And then n times n squared is n cubed, right? n cubed. Okay, the next one is a plus. And then three times 12 is 36, so that doesn't have an i, so we can pull it out. And then n times n is n squared. And then we have the sum as i runs from one to n. Once you do one of these on your own, like without watching the video, like you're gonna be a monster. And then this is i. And that looks okay. And minus, it's really easy to mess up. Uh, there's no i's here, so three times two is six over n, and then here we have i going from one to n, and this is just the number one, right? Just the number one there. All right, so now we can apply the formulas. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply them. So this piece hangs out, 27 over n cubed. This piece here, this is a formula, okay? This formula is n, n plus one, two n plus one, all divided by six, okay? So it's a little bit weird. Uh, I remember having a really hard time memorizing this one. Um, how do I memorize it? I just know it's that. I mean, there's, I don't really have a nice way. It's very similar to this one. So you'll look, so this is 36 
over n squared. This one is the easy one, right? This one is n, n plus 1 over 2. So i squared has the n and the n plus 1. That part's easy because this one has it. But then it has that 2n plus 1 in the weird 6. And that's that's always the part that threw me off uh, with, with memorizing it. For some reason, I had a hard time memorizing that. But once you memorize it, um, you got it. Minus 6 over n. And then this is just n, right? This is just n. I should have emphasized that this here is, is this here. Right? That's what this is. And then this here is this here. And this here is the n. Okay, so little arrows pointing to what, what is what. Um, let's go ahead and take the limit and we're done. Right? So the limit. Oh, let's be really pro. Let's write the original question again. Actually, I have it written down somewhere. Uh, maybe I don't. But what was it? It was x squared plus 2x minus 5 from 1 to 4. So x squared plus 2x minus 5. So x squared plus 2x minus 5 dx, right, when we're going from 1 to 4, and this is the limit, as n goes to infinity. I'm going to use a different color here, go to orange. So I'm going to go ahead and write it again. I'm not going to simplify anything. I'm going to put this in parentheses. 27 over n cubed, n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all over 6, my handwriting is deteriorating, these problems are long, plus 36 over n squared, then we have n, n plus 1, over 2, minus, oh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and cancel it, I can't take it, 6. <laughs> All right, and this is equal to, so here on the bottom, the degree is 3. Here it's n, 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 it's also 3. You see you have n times n times n, so you get n cubed. So it's just going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients. So it'll be 27 times 2, which is 54, over 6. Okay, that's really sneaky, right? You do have to multiply the 27 here and the 2, okay? So plus, and then this is 36n squared over 2n squared, so it's just 36 over 2, and then minus 6. So this is equal to... 54 over 6 is 9, plus, right, because 6 times 9 is 54, plus 18, right, 18 times 2 is 36, minus 6. This is equal to uh, 9 plus 18 is where we're going to fail. This is 27 minus 6, right, yeah, uh, which is 21. Wow, brain failure. Let's do that a different way, uh, just to make sure we're not completely messing up here. So 18 minus 6 is 12, and then you have 9, you add it to that, and it's 21. Wow, the struggle is real. So 21. 21 is the answer. So that's it. That would be the answer to the question. I hope this video has been helpful. And remember, uh, just take it one step at a time, right? Start by writing down the formulas, circle stuff, and then just carefully go through it. Good luck.